Change begins from within. As easy as it is to look outside of ourselves and want the world to change, the truth is, it never will if we remain the same. This podcast was created for change makers like you who want more love and connection in your community. Today, you are going to hear stories that will inspire you and also challenge you to be the change. We are going to go deep, my friend. So take a deep breath and settle in. My name is Amy Leah Tamburini. Welcome to the Circle of Change. Welcome, beautiful soul. Thank you for joining me today for a conversation about a few of my favorite topics, communication and perspective. These two areas are peas in a pod, and if we consider them together, we become power communicators and power action takers. Specifically, I want to talk about all of the head talk that we get into that prevents us from stepping into difficult conversations. Even calling them difficult conversations is interesting. It kind of sets the energetic tone, doesn't it? We're going to address that too and give these experiences a more empowering name. I am passionate about this because I know what a difference it can make in your life when you find your way through some unhelpful patterns and perspectives. What's so cool about the tool that I'm going to share with you is that you can use it in any situation where you feel resistance to taking action like stepping out into your wildest dreams, which I know are brewing right now and feeling very alive as we enter into this new lunar year. So stay with me here. This is a tool that will put all of your dreams into action and transform your relationships. Let's settle in. As you find your way here to this present moment, take a few deep breaths. I personally like to follow the breath in through my nose and into my lungs and then follow the breath back out again as it goes out into the ether, intentionally letting go of what I do not need in this moment. Keep focusing on your breath in and out. Today, I'm going to read you a note from the universe. This is a creation of Mike Dooley, an amazing man who was featured in The Secret. If you haven't signed up for these daily notes already, I highly recommend them. I will put the link in the show notes. As I read this, remember that this is the universe talking to you. It's not that you worry, but that you care a lot. And knowing this can make such a difference because then you can also remember that caring is my specialty, that every life unfolds in the palm of my hand and that not one second of eternity is ever revealed that I haven't carefully prepared. Silly, the universe. Just today, I sent an email that I have been sitting on for months. It took me many renditions until I could get it to a place where I was simply stating the facts without judgments. The reason I decided to send this letter was because although the issue was old, I kept having all sorts of feels about it in certain circumstances. And when I realized those feels were there because I hadn't cleaned this issue up, I decided to take action. My intention in writing the letter was to practice speaking my truth from love. As somebody who helps others to communicate in loving ways, I too am constantly in this work. I could not practice this enough. I'm not going to get into the specifics of the situation, but I am going to walk you through the process, the journey, so that you can, first of all, feel like maybe you're not alone in finding these things challenging or maybe in some of the processes or experiences you've had, and so that you do have a process to work through, if you wish. 
So here's how it went. It started many months ago, and it was an experience that I had, and it didn't feel good. And I simply ignored the feelings. I ignored, I ignored, I ignored, I felt bad. I ignored, I ignored, I felt bad, I felt bad. And then that was enough. (laughs) I did not want to keep negative emotions in my body. So I knew I had to stop ignoring them and take action. So the action that I decided to take was draft an email. Now, this email number one was something I wouldn't send to anybody. Never, ever, ever. That is something I have learned. 20 years ago, mm -hmm, I might have sent it. But I've learned enough over the years to understand that it doesn't serve anybody to do that. And it wouldn't actually solve the issue. So that was email number one. And the purpose of that email, the intention was simply to move this anger from my body onto a piece of paper. Then I drafted another email, and this time setting a different intention. Setting my intention before I speak to someone, before I create something, before I host a dialogue, has been an absolute game changer for me. To bring home how that fundamentally changed this letter and how it was received, I'll take you through the process. So the letter, that first draft of the letter... There are a lot of unconscious intentions in there, like making the other person wrong, putting the other person in their place, blaming the other person so I didn't have to take responsibility for my actions. Once I claimed for myself what I was responsible for, that's when I started the next draft. So that's an essential next step, or maybe it's like part 1B, (laughs) which is taking responsibility for landing in this position in the first place. This can be a really tricky one for some people, and we've covered it more in depth in other episodes, so I'm not going to go into it here, except to say that in taking responsibility, in this case, I became aware that one of the reasons I was so fired up was because I had detached myself from any responsibility over the matter that I had trusted this company to deal with. The other piece was that I could have spoken up sooner when things were going awry, but I didn't. All of that was on me. Just saying that, just noting that and owning it, I could feel the energy lift. I can't tell you how powerful it is to take responsibility for what you can. It's absolutely life-changing. So round two of this letter, I got clear that the most loving intention I could reach for was to practice speaking my truth from love. With that intention, I drafted the email again. Now, this email felt a lot better, but there were still some paragraphs or sentences that triggered a little feeling in my belly. It kind of felt like a poke or a nudge. It wasn't totally obvious why I felt this in my gut. I just knew it didn't feel good. And because I've been with my feelings and gotten to know my body very intimately over the years, I knew I was coming from fear. But there are parts of me that were still so attached to these sentences, like I could not delete them. You know, I needed to say in some way that they had wronged me, right? (laughs) Can you relate? Like there are moments where we just dig our heels in so tightly And if we stay there, we will always create tension and defensiveness on the other side. And we know that leads nowhere good. So because I could not get myself through this piece, I could not get myself to delete certain sentences. And I also knew I didn't want to send it with those sentences in it. I reached out for support. So I have an amazing friend who I have spoken a lot about on this show. And I always go to her when I want honest insights into where I am coming from. When those frightened parts of my personality, those shadow sides, that trauma response that wants to protect me won't let up, I go to her. So without sharing the names or the company's name, I read the letter. And she brilliantly named the parts that sounded like they were coming from a place of needing to be right. And these were the exact sentences that I felt that little twinge on. I love those moments of confirmation that my body is always communicating with me. And yours is too. You know, we just tend to ignore it and hit send or say the thing anyways. 
And then we deal with the consequences. But I've done a lot of work to get clear that I want to put the least amount of fear back out into the world. So I do take this quite seriously and I do the work and I take the time to understand where I'm coming from most of the time. Caveat. (laughs) I'm still human. So her next piece of advice was really brilliant and is something that I teach. I mean, seriously, sometimes you just cannot see these things for yourself in the moment, regardless of how much you've studied or teach or do this work. So she told me to state the facts only to remove any source of judgment. This is what I experienced and this is how it made me feel. Now, in nonviolent communication, those are the first two steps. And then you could move on to the next step, which is making a request. Now, I didn't do that because I felt like this was enough. So I rewrote this email. I still sat with it for a couple more weeks. And then I hit send. I hit send. And within seconds, I received a response, a very gracious response that clearly indicated my experience was a concern to them. They were going to look into it. And then they made a request of me. Is there anything we can do to make this right? Whoa. (laughs) That, my friend, is a sign of an awesome company, a wonderful business. I mean, their response healed everything for me because I felt heard. And then they went that extra mile to ask, what could they do to repair the harm? Those are the basic principles that we get into in restorative justice. So These are really good things to keep in mind, whether you have your own business, whether you are applying this to a relationship, whether you're applying this to a client or a work setting or a family setting, everything that I've just walked through are essential steps in maintaining connection to those that we are surrounded by and those who are important to us in our lives. So just to recap the process, Before I share with you this tool, I ignored, (laughs) ignored, ignored, ignored. And then that didn't feel good. And then I decided to write freely. So my intention was simply to get the anger and all the frustration out of my body. That experience is always for you. It is for nobody else. And then I set an intention, a different one, related to how I wanted to be in the world and in this particular relationship. And then I got support because I thought I needed it from an aligned friend who is trained in many of the same teachings as me. And then I rewrote the email, I checked in with my body, and I hit send. Here's what I want to say about that. This incident, it happened throughout April to August of last year. And I chose not to engage in the conflict energy that was present at that time. So I disengaged. And for me at that time, it was the right decision. But then it wasn't. And I want to say that you always have a chance to clean things up. I have done this in every transformational program I have taken and beyond. Cleaning things up is not only for this lifetime, it's for lifetimes past and future. So then when we do this work, we are truly healing across generations. This whole construct of time is only a human thing. And we can Use it sometimes as an excuse not to clean the thing up. Oh, it's been so long. Oh, it's not relevant anymore. Oh, you know, you have to say things right away or otherwise it doesn't land for the other person. All of that is untrue. Cleaning up can look like directly engaging with the other person or it can be going through a process with yourself or with a stand-in, something to help you move through it and really feel your way through the experience. For me, in this particular case, I knew that simply writing the email wasn't going to be enough for me. So this process we've just walked through, it's super in-depth and it takes time, it takes practice, and it does take support. It's part of the work that we're going to be doing at the retreat. And I'm so excited about that because I know that this work will change the lives of those people that come and join me in that experience. You know, you may or may not have the supports in place in your life, or maybe even the relationship with your emotions and your body to walk through that step by step. I want to give you a tool that you can implement right away that will get you into action. Yes, because action is so important on this journey. 
We don't learn or build new skills to have these harder conversations without exercising them. And I want to set you up so that you can step in with a higher vibe energy. The tool is to help you move through the discomfort, like the beforehand discomfort, by focusing on your perspective. So think about a conversation right now that is on your mind, on your heart, maybe feeling a bit heavy or maybe causing a bit of anxiety. Get present with what is it that's preventing you from stepping into that conversation? What is it that you're worried about? If you're anything like me, it often sounds like a number of things. They're going to be mad at me. They're going to throw me under the bus, maybe even do that publicly. If they're somebody that's in my friend or networking circle, I'm, I'm, I get worried about seeing them at regular events and it's going to make it all awkward. Sometimes it's getting hung up on saying the right thing. Like I want to be perfect in the words that come out of my mouth so they will land perfectly and not ruffle any feathers or I don't want to make a fool out of myself. And oh, if I say this thing, they might not like me anymore. Ouch. Can you relate to any of those thoughts? Most people can because this type of fear is part of us and it's kind of accepted in our society. But what it all comes down to is the underlying fear of abandonment. You know, we want to be liked. We don't want people to leave us because we don't want to be abandoned and therefore not survive. That's a primal fear and we all have it whether we are aware of it or not. So when we feed ourselves these stories, like the ones I just mentioned, like, oh my gosh, they're not going to like me. I'm going to make a fool of myself. They're going to be mad at me. It activates that protective response that will keep you safe at all costs. That often means for some of us stuffing our words and then suffering the consequences of holding those emotions in our body. And I know that pattern very well. But emotions need to move their energy and we keep them locked in our body. They only cause harm internally and then eventually externally as well. So here is one way that you can entice yourself, support yourself to be in action. Besides getting clear on your intention, which I think is just the, a golden nugget for life. The other thing that always helps me is to step away from the worrying. This is what Mike Dooley, the, the creator of Notes from the Universe, calls reverse worrying. The way that this works is that you put yourself ahead of the conversation, like past the event. It's already happened. And then you write down 10 to 25 reasons why it went so well and why it was such a success. <laughs> Yes, like we're making up stories anyway. So why not make them up and allow them to serve us to really show up as our highest selves. So for an example, I'll take you through some of the things that I could have said to myself. So, oh my gosh, it went so well, because I put a lot of thought into this. And I got really clear on a loving intention. That conversation went so well, because I remembered this person was a human and a business owner just like me. So I connected to them first as a human. It went so well because I didn't like make the letter personal. I made it about facts. It went amazingly well because I asked for support from a trusted friend who has a lot of experience in this. It went well because everything always works out for me. It went well because the universe is friendly and is always supporting me. It went well because I stepped in with curiosity and I saw it as a learning experience. It went well because the universe cares and has carefully prepared everything for me. <gasps> Do you feel the difference between these sentences and the one I read earlier that were full of dread and fear? And don't beat yourself up because here's the thing, our brains are wired to protect us. So it will always, always, always look for the things to watch out for. But our work as change makers is to start becoming aware of that and not taking those thoughts at face value. It's getting curious to ask ourselves, mm -hmm. is that 100% true that they're, you know, not gonna like me? And if it's not, 
then asking like, what else could be possible? What else could be possible? And a great way to reframe it is to future think, to reverse worry like Mike Dooley does and put yourself beyond the event and imagine the best possible outcome and write down why it was so awesome. That business owner that I wrote that email to, you know, potentially knows something now about their business and can do something about it that they couldn't before. Maybe it'll help them thrive or succeed to a higher level. And now again, that's not my responsibility that they do something with the information, but it is a possible outcome that I wasn't thinking about before. So let's end by helping ourselves by stop referring to these conversations as difficult. What if we refer to them as opportunities for growth and expansion, opportunities to bring more love and joy to our lives, a cool chance to change someone's life and mine, a wildly auspicious chance to deepen my relationship with someone or to let someone go that isn't keeping me high vibe. Yes, like now we're talking. The last word I want to share on this is to remember that you can't control the other person's response. So even if you go through this whole process and the person doesn't receive things well, you'll be less impacted by it because A, you were in your integrity and you know that the reaction is theirs, not yours to own. And secondly, because you walked in or you wrote or sent the email with a higher vibe energy, even if the response doesn't feel that good, you're going to be in a relatively better off feeling place. Like you might go from hopeful to optimism versus walking in with those other stories and starting off at worry and then falling down to blame, you know? So this is all win-win when we can really get conscious about our perspective and how we're setting ourselves up for success or for doom and gloom. Based on my story, you know that it takes work, it takes intention, it takes focus, it takes support to really do communication well, do it in a way that can support our relationships and our quality of life. This is what I'm now coaching people in one on one. So if you have a situation or a pattern that you'd like to address, so that you can have more ease and joy in your conversations and deepen your connection with others, send me an email. You can send it still to the podcast, podcast at humconsulting.ca. And let's connect on how I can support you. Maybe it's one-on-one, -on -one, maybe it's one of the group programs. I'm here to help because I know firsthand how much more freedom and joy is possible and how much deeper and more meaningful your relationships can be. It is so worth it. I believe we can literally banish loneliness by working on this aspect of our lives. I look forward to hearing from you. Every once in a while, a person comes into your life and changes it forever. For me, that person in this chapter of my life is Sean Smith. Now you've heard me speak of him a few times if you're one of our regular listeners. And I'm excited to share with you that he's going to be joining us next week in Circle to talk about life, to talk about why we make the choices we do, and what's essential for us to consider as we move forward on this change-making journey. Sean is a master results coach. He's a speaker, he's an author, he's a poet, he's a teacher. He is the one who trained me in neurotransformational coaching and helps people around the world transform how they think so that we can live our best lives and so that we can be and do and have what we are here for everything that we've been talking about today. So I highly recommend this conversation and look forward to introducing him to you next week. Until then, keep being amazing, keep looking for the flip side, and keep deepening your trust that the universe has your back. Ciao. I'm now passing the talking piece to you. If you feel called to put your voice in the circle, please head to humconsulting.ca forward slash podcast and share your story there. I cannot wait to hear what has come up for you as you have listened to what has been shared here today. I wish you love and joy beyond your wildest imagination. Thank you so much for being here in the circle of change. 
I also want to express my gratitude to the following peeps. Circle of Change is recorded on Lekwungen territories, and I am so grateful to live on this land. Our opening and closing music was created by the talented E-Roll Beats. You can find his creations at erollbeats.com. And special thanks to my coach, Mary Chan of Organized Sound Productions for bringing this podcast to life. Until next time, ciao.